Hi everyone, this is Rishi Agarwal. In this video, I'm gonna go over a chest x-ray with a very subtle finding. I posted the image last week, but here it is on the left. I'll give you a second to look at it and you could pause the video here if you want. If you haven't seen the abnormality yet, don't feel bad because this is a really tough case and I'll give you a hint. There's a normal line in the mediastinum that's displaced because of the abnormality. Let me try to window it a little bit more. Have you seen it yet? The abnormality is right here. This is the azygoesophageal line, which is the interface between the right lower lobe and the mediastinum. And normally, the azygoesophageal line is in the midline, and it goes all the way up to where the azygous vein drains into the SVC right above the right main bronchus. But in this case, you can see that the azygoesophageal line is displaced to the right, and there's this contour abnormality right here. Over here, I put a normal chest x-ray up, and this right here is the azygoesophageal line. And notice it goes up in the midline, and you can see it all the way up to the right tracheobronchial angle, which is where you see the azygous vein. So what's your differential for this case? Well, your differential should be based on the anatomy. So let me put up a normal axial CT. Here's an axial CT of a normal patient through this area. So what are the normal structures that live here? Well, in the mediastinum, we have the azygous vein, which is right here. We have the esophagus. Lymph nodes could potentially live here. And then if we go just lateral to that, we have the pleura, and then we have the lung. So our differential diagnosis should be based around those things. You could potentially have a dilated azygous vein in the case of an interrupted IVC, but in those cases, the vein wouldn't be focally dilated like we have in this example. In the cases of an interrupted IVC with azygous continuation, the azygous vein is dilated all throughout the chest. You could also have an abnormality in the esophagus, so maybe this is an esophageal mass. Lymph nodes also live here, so maybe this is an enlarged lymph node. And then as I mentioned, you have the pleura right next to it, so perhaps this is a loculated pleural effusion or a pleural mass. And then finally, we have to think about things in the lungs, so lung consolidations or masses. So based on the likelihood, I would probably put an esophageal mass first followed by a pleural lesion, and then a lung lesion. So one thing to note about this is that look how smooth the border of this is. That tells us that it's likely not going to be in the lung because masses or consolidation in the lung will tend to not have this smooth of a border. That's why I put that last in the differential. So let's go to the answer. So here's the CT of this patient, and you could see that there's a mass right here in the esophagus. If I scroll up, here's the esophagus, and as I go down, you can see that there's focal enlargement due to a mass in the esophagus, and that is pushing this right border of the esophagus, causing it to protrude into the lung, which is why we have this displacement of the azygoesophageal line. Now you might say, why isn't this a spinal mass? Well, the paraspinal lines are lateral to it. This is the right paraspinal line right here. And that's a normal position. And the other thing is, if you follow this line medially, as you go down, it's superimposed over the spine. So that's why this can't be a spinal mass. Let's take a look at a couple of companion cases. Okay, here's a different patient with another diagnosis. And in this patient, this is the azygoesophageal line. And as we go down, you can see that the azygoesophageal line is displaced. And there's this bulge right here. But the more obvious finding is that there's a large bulge 
over here that looks like there's a mass or a round opacity behind the heart. But then we also have this lucency right here, and this goes along with a stomach bubble. So this is a hiatal hernia. And most of the time, when you see displacement of the inferior aspect of the azagoesophageal line over here, then it's usually due to a hiatal hernia. And if we put up the lateral view of this patient, you can see that it is behind the heart, which is where a hiatal hernia should be. Okay, here's another patient with an abnormality in their azagoesophageal line. And as we follow the line down, you can again see that it is displaced to the right. And we also have displacement of this line to the left. And so you might think that this is also a hiatal hernia, but this patient had uh, liver disease with portal hypertension. So this was a different diagnosis. If we go to the MRI of this patient, you could see that there's these dilated tortuous vessels right next to the esophagus. So these are parasophageal varices in a patient with portal hypertension. Okay, to summarize, the azagoesophageal line is a normal line in the mediastinum that represents the interface between the right lower lobe and the mediastinum. The structures in the mediastinum that make up the azagoesophageal line are the azagous vein and esophagus, but you can also see lymph nodes in that area. And when you're formulating your differential diagnosis, you also have to think about things in the pleura and in the lung. Normally, when you see displacement of the inferior aspect of the azagoesophageal line down here, it's usually due to a hiatal hernia, but not always. You also have to think about things like parasophageal varices, and occasionally you can see an esophageal mass. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this topic or any other chest radiology topic, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.